from the Cosmopolitan Hotel in Las Vegas, Nevada, it's The Cube, covering Koopa Inspire 2019. Brought to you by Koopa. Welcome to The Cube, Lisa Martin on the ground at Koopa Inspire 19 from the Vegas. I'm very pleased to welcome, not, not Bono, not Sting, it's Chandler. The CMO of Koopa Chonar, welcome to the Cube. Lisa, thank you. It's great to be here today. This is a really cool event. It's you, procurement is sexy. It is sexy. It can be so incredibly transformative to any organization. I loved how this the last two days, what you guys have done is a great job of articulating Koopa's value in procurement, invoicing, payments, expense through the voices of your customers. Sure. And I think there's no better brand value that you can get. Sure, absolutely. Tell us a little bit about um, your role at as the CMO at Coupa and marketing in a fast growing company with a product that people might go, I, I haven't heard of that. What is that again? Yeah, it's a good question. I think, you know, if I look at it, my role is at Coupa is first of all for Coupa, what's interesting about it, as you said, is that every company makes money every company spends money. So invariably, Coupa can be used across a set of different companies, one from the Golden State Warriors to you know, uh, Procter & Gamble to the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society, across the board. And then from our perspective, you know, the, the holistically we're looking at business spend management, different aspects of spend, right? You said procurement, invoicing, expenses. So my role is to build that marketing engine to get that flywheel effect of first you drive awareness. All marketing starts with awareness, and you said people yes. haven't heard of it, and it's to first to drive awareness in a very thoughtful way to the right contextual community we want to go after, and through drive acquisition, we drive close synergies between sales and marketing to ultimately drive pipeline and win rates and ultimately deals. And then very importantly in today's world is to drive the advocacy yes. and get your most passionate customers to evangelize about the brand so that we create the flywheel effect of awareness, acquisition, and advocacy. And that's really what my role today is. And I love how I read an article where you call that the stairway to marketing heaven. So I thought, I wonder if you're a, a guitar guy. But you're right, it's have to drive awareness, but in a meaningful, thoughtful way. Especially yes. today with all the technology, we wake up with it, right? It's our sure. phone is our alarm clock. Sure. We are bombarded by ads if we're on Instagram, you know, following our favorite celebrities or whatnot. We, and, and it's scary when they have kind of the right context, but it has to be thoughtful. We need to know our audience. Totally, totally. So you described this stairway to marketing heaven, as you just mentioned, it's, it's awareness, it's acquisition, which is key. But off, I, I feel like a lot of companies don't forget the advocacy part, but they don't invest enough in it's it because point. That's the best salesperson for your technology is the people that are using it successfully, totally. right? To totally. Yes. Yeah, so in fact, you know, there's a study about a couple of years ago which looked at how balanced the vote is in terms of spend in pre-sale versus post-sale. And it's interesting that 87% of B2B marketing spend was pre-sale. In other words, only 13% of people was investing in retention marketing, adoption marketing, you know, customer marketing, and you know, this whole advocacy marketing, right? And in today's world, that doesn't work because you've got to balance the boat because to your point, you're getting in a peer-bound world where your existing customers are your best sellers. And the more, and, 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 and prospects who have all the buying power today are looking to your existing customers to guide them in their purchasing decisions. So as an organization, if you balance the boat, then you're going to get the flywheel effect going for you in terms of driving the right advocacy across all channels, just not your own channels, your own channels, to ultimately drive that acquisition going. Do you think that's actually more valuable? Because it's one thing to have on your dot-com site, your social media sites, all these great things about your technologies, et cetera, coming from, from customers or from sure. product experts, from influencers. Talk about the value as, as technology advances so much and we are influenced by so many other channels, the value of the earned channel and that peer-to-peer um, yeah, peer yeah, yeah. Peer yeah, yeah, yeah. relationship. Yeah, I think, you know, as I say that every mom says her baby is good looking, right? But in software, they're not very, not every baby is really good looking. Which means, if you take that analogy and extend it, is if you're coming to your own channel, invariably you're going to see some great customer videos about your product, you're going to see some great endorsements and testimonials, you're going to see some great quotes about your product. The reality, there's no bad news about your product on your own website, right? On your own channel. But the reality is there are some, you know, some people might have different opinions. If you go to Glassdoor, no company gets a 5.0 on Glassdoor, right. right? And if you take the same thing and extend it to earn channels for advocacy, you know, folks like G2 Crowd, Trust Radius, and B2B, for example, are becoming more relevant today than before. Because two things, one is 87% or 85% of a customer's journey is self-directed. 
80, which that much that much That's and if it, you know Forrester has anywhere from 60 to 80 but reality is whether we're buying a car or whether we're buying Cooper yeah. right the, today yeah. a customer is self dis discovering more journeys and in that process they're looking to move these earned channels as validation of which ones to go after than just your own channels so that's why we got to balance the boat and distributors are our advocacy spend dollars across both your own channels and your earned channels and that's really important for you and you and the flywheel will pay off for you over time from that perspective it will and that sort of seems like a lot of the things that Susie Irwin was talking about to the audience earlier that's common sense is why is it that you see these marketing budgets that are so heavily weighted towards just getting awareness, getting them customers acquired, and then not thinking about retention marketing and comp-based marketing. I'll tell you why. I think if you, any smart CMO will conceptually agree with you, right? Nobody is going to say, of course it's not important for me to get advocacy. The challenge comes in, in terms of how that marketing department is measured, right? What, that me what gets measured gets funded at the end of the day, right? That's a good point, And yes. the reality is a lot of these B2B companies are still measuring marketing based on What's the pipeline you're driving and what's the top of the funnel metrics that you're driving, right? And in reality, that's a little bit of a skewed thing because then if, if that's what you're being measured at the board level, at the executive level, then guess what? All your funding is going to go towards that. Right. But really, the true measurement of marketing is, is, is about one, is about yes, you have to get pipeline, you have to influence win rates in the bottom of the funnel, and that's where product marketing comes in. But as importantly, you have to look at the number of brand advocates you create and lifetime value of a customer. Yes, right. CLV. Yes. CLV, and, and that's really, really customer lifetime value is so important because in a SaaS business, ultimately the Mufasa metric, you know, I'm a Lion King fan, the Mufasa metric is really lifetime value because if a customer stays longer with you, pays you more, and is shouting from the rooftop, then invariably that SaaS business is doing well. And that's why you have to balance the board in terms of post-advocacy, post-acquisition spend into advocacy, as much as you've done in pre-acquisition. Pre pre when you came into Coupa a couple of years ago, have you been able to shift those budgets because you're able to demonstrate the value that that advocacy piece generates? With absolutely, the absolutely. And I have a progressive, uh, very progressive thinking CEO who partners with me on this too. So we've been absolutely able to do that. In fact, what we're trying to do at the end of the day, and most software companies, you know, the real goal should be creating a tribe, right? In technology, you know, you have to create a tribe to be a titan. And it's just not about the capability, it's about the community. And that's really what we're trying to do at Cooper, is to create the tribal community feeling. So this community is bigger than the brand. Uh, it is about the community itself, you know, learning, sharing, and growing with each other and being successful. And we're just fostering that. So from that perspective, if you look at this conference and the investment we're making here, some of the programs we're doing in terms of advocacy, what we call spend setters, et cetera, yes. is all about that community tribal feeling and, and go establish that. Right. So I, you know, to to use some, you know, inspiration from our consumer brands. Right. If you think, really think about it, people don't buy what they want. People buy what they want to be. So let me give you what I mean by that. Right. What I want could be a bike, could be any motorbike. But what I want to be could be part of a very special community, and that's why Harley Davidson is successful. Ah. Right. What I want could be any, you know, stationary bike today. But what I want to be is part of some cool community, modern community like Peloton. That's why Peloton is successful. So similarly for us, what I want could be some spend management software, but what I want to be is part of this community, this cool club, and that's the feeling they're trying to create in the post-acquisition cycle. You know, that I love that you said that because you talked about that this morning, and I loved how you, you have the word community on the slide and then broke that out into communication unity. Yeah. And one of the senses that I got yesterday when um, Rob was talking about yeah, it. when Rob kicked off everything, is this is a very collaborative community. Yeah. We think about that in terms, of, you know, like a developer community or something like that. But where Coupa is now managing 1.2 trillion dollars to spend through the platform, that right. every other business that's using Coupa yeah. gets to benefit from. It's customer centric. It's supplier centric. But it's about applying the right technologies, AI, machine learning, to all this data, so everybody benefits. That's right. And one of the, you know, the interesting aspects of community building is, one aspect of community building is, you know, the Mark Benihoff had a great, you know, evangelistic marketing, was a way of community building. You'd come and, you know, social, really evangelize, and this is where we're going, and you all need to come with us. When I was at Marketo, it was interesting, community building was through more educational marketing and doing it through this kind of, you know, I'm going to educate you to thought leadership. Another good way of community building is through product intelligence, which is community intelligence. So collectively, the sum of all parts is smarter than the parts themselves. Yes. Right? And you know, Rob has a great line which says, none of us is, is as smart as all of us. And the fundamental community intelligence offering is based on this first principle. So example, that if I'm in the community of, of, of Cooper customers, 
the next customer is smarter than the previous customer because the collective intelligence grew, which means I can then go benchmark it myself. Like I gave an example this morning of USO, uh, the company that provides services to the United States troops. And when Rick Quainton's at USO benchmarked himself using community intelligence, which is the rest of the community, he realizes that his invoice cycle times are seven times lower. So that kind of intelligence is, 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 is you know, extremely beneficial and invaluable to companies. So that's the value of the community is providing that collective intelligence. Like Waze is a great consumer example, right? Like those of us who use Waze for traffic know that it's all community driven and each one of us is smarter because we're collectively using it. It's the same concept in applying that to B2B software. So as we see you mentioned, the, the over 80% of the buying decision is self-directed, whether we're buying a car or Coupa software. Did Coupa kind of see, foresee that, you know, in the last decade to see we're going to have to go to more community-driven collaboration because the consumer of anything, any product or service is going to be so empowered. We need to, because that's part of the Coupa Foundation, is, which we don't see a lot. It's, you know, companies that are 10 plus years old. Yeah, it's, a, it's and I credit to Rob for his vision for this, is because I think early part of the company, he wrote it in the contracts that the company can benefit um, collectively, every company can benefit by, by being part of this community. And the fact is data is aggregated, abstracted, there's no information that is sensitive, et cetera. But the fact is we all can collectively benefit from it. There was a great vision of Rob and, and early people and that's benefited us because the benefit is really over scale and time. Now we have $1.2 trillion. It is really statistically significant in each different industry to get that intelligence. And that is one of the other reasons we launched our business spend index. It's called spendindex.com where we can use the billions of dollars spent in the community to provide a leading indicator of economic growth based on current business spend sentiment. You kind of think of ADP as this payroll, uh, you know, it's called the ADP payroll thing that comes yep. out and GDP, and the gross domestic product, domestic product report comes out. Those tend to be rear view mirror lagging indicators, whereas we're using community-based intelligence to provide a windshield, a leading indicator of where the economy is going. So there's so many different use cases benefiting based on spend you're doing as well as where the economy is going, and all this is based on the intelligence. It's so powerful because, to your point, it's not, we're not you're not looking behind, you're actually- it's the windshield. Exactly, able right. to be looking forward. So with all the announcements and the great things that have come out with the AWS um, expansion, what you guys are doing with Pay. I was shocked to learn the percentages of businesses that are still writing paper checks, <laughs> yeah. or the, the fact that a lot of companies have you know 10 plus banks that they're working with. There's still so much manual processes. You must just be, the, the future is so bright, you gotta wear shades with Coupa, but what excites you about what you guys have announced the last couple of days, and the feedback that you're hearing from your tribe? I think there's two kinds of things, right? One is, you know, continue to set the innovation agenda for the industry. And, and really, you know, you have to look at every customer on their unique journey of mat maturity and maturation. So we have a very, you know, thoughtful, you know, what we call maturity index, the business spend management index, whereas you're saying some of these customers, for example, you mentioned, maybe in the first stage of this maturity, where for them it's just getting automation, going from paperless to, going from paper to paperless could yes. be the first step. Whereas some other customers might say that, I've gotten there, but I want to get the next level of sophistication to orchestrate these business spend processes. So what's exciting for us in the feedback is, we're creating product capability across this maturation journey for our customers to make them successful at each of those places, right? And Coupa Bay is one example of that, right? And whereas some of the other pieces we talked about, you know, we announced about you know, some of the community offerings that we did also is on that. So that's one exciting piece. The other exciting piece that customers tell us at this conference is foster platforms for us to engage with each other, learn from each other, share from each other, and grow with each other. So even stuff that Rob talked about, which is sourced together, this concept of customers coming together to drive a sourcing process, and, and again, the collective intelligence of the community, that we're getting very, very positive feedback from our perspective, right? And ultimately, Rob and the company is, is really good saying that it is not about Customer, satis customer satisfaction, it is about customer success. That's a delineation there. A customer could be very satisfied with you, but it may not be necessarily successful. Right. And we say it's not about satisfaction, it's about su success. And by creating this innovation cycle and then having a post-implementation process that's driving true value, that's really how we drive customer success. And something that I've heard over and over as I've talked to a number of your customers yesterday and today is how much they're feeling 
Coupa is listening, yeah. their feedback is being incorporated, they're actually influencing the development of the technology, and that yeah. was loud and clear the last two days. Yeah, I think there's, you know, Rob talked about the, the number of features that have been influenced by the community, and you know, we have these two- 300 plus in the 300 last 12 plus, months. Yes, 300 plus in the last 12 months, and you know, this is concept of two years, one mouth, uh, and you know, listen, learn, and, and, and innovate, and that's kind of the philosophy here. But it's a right mix of listening to customers, learning from them, and getting the right input from them for driving innovation, as well as having strategic vision on, on where this market is going, and right. having the right mix of those to provide the capability to customers. Wow, you're on a rocket ship. Chandra, it was great to have you on theCUBE. You'll have to come back? Yes, Lisa, absolutely, I'll come back. All and right. It was a pleasure being here. Uh, right. awesome. awesome, thank you so much. For Chandar, I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching theCUBE from Coupa Inspire 19. Thanks for watching.